It's June 19th, 2023. You stand inside the walls of the Animal Kingdom at Disney World Orlando. A bottle of water costs four whole entire dollars. And as the teenager just trying to work their way through the summer passes you the bottle, your hand feels a brief, cold release from the sweltering sunlight that has been wearing you down all day. You break the seal, turn the bottle upwards, and... It's not enough. In the time it took for the bottle to leave the precious refrigerated air, the contents are already creeping their way towards lukewarm, and you are left feeling four dollars lighter and just as thirsty. You can't keep blowing money like that in search of a way to quench your thirst. Surely there must be a better way. And then you see it. A bottle of Sprite. That green four dollar bottle full of clear, bubbly, lemon limey sugar water meets the lips of everyone around you, and in unison they sigh a simple, ah. You've been outplayed. Here you were, hoping that water would quench your thirst, but you failed to consider how quickly the heat would rob you of that joy. The crowd around you laughs at your foolishness as you sink to your knees, too dehydrated to move on. As your eyes shut for the last time, you wonder why no one warned you that there was a better way to achieve refreshment, but it's too late for regrets now. You embrace the searing concrete, and you succumb to biology, inches away from Expedition Everest. What you just heard may have sounded outlandish at times, but it could happen to any one of us at any point in time. I should know. It happened to me. I died there on that pavement, and I've served out my eternal punishment ever since, sitting here and embarrassing myself online for your entertainment. But do not weep for me, good viewer. I come to you like Jacob Marley to Stooge. It's too late for me, but you can still be saved. I've spent my time in the underworld studying the dark texts, and what I have found might just uncover the truths of how to obtain the ever-distant dream of refreshment on a hot day. Why is it that Sprite saved that crowd while water failed me? Is this just secretly an ad for Coca-Cola products? No, no. Surely not. Sprite must have much higher expectations of quality than I can provide. Right? Just like uh -huh. No, this is not an ad. Whatever you decide to drink to stay cool and refreshed on a hot summer's day, whether it be water, Sprite, lemonade, beer, pickle juice, whatever. They all have a place in this video. Because this isn't just a video about refreshing drinks. It's a video about refreshment. In order to do that, we're going to be discussing some of the most bleeding edge scientific breakthroughs in the modern era. After all, if we can't do anything about global warming, we might as well study up on how to stay refreshed in the heat. So without further ado, Let's get into the science of refreshment. We should probably start by defining what refreshment actually is. According to one consumer study I read titled, Examining the consumer view of refreshing perception, relevant fruits, vegetables, soft drinks, and beers, and consumer age and gender segmentations. Yes, that is actually its full title. The term refreshing, including related words such as refreshment, refreshed, and occasionally freshness, is considered an emotional response to the food consumption experience. Delectable stuff. That seems like a good enough place to start, and it certainly beats my definition, which was just, makes you feel less thirsty. If refreshment is an emotional experience, then my death by lack of refreshment, or defreshment, if you will, is essentially just like Padme dying in that one Star Wars movie of a broken heart. I just couldn't handle living in a world without maximum refreshment, just like she couldn't live in a world where her husband choked her and tried to kill everybody that she loved. Basically the same person. That report is actually a pretty good jumping off point, so we might as well just start getting into the weeds now. For the sake of time, I'm not going through the entire thing, but if you want to read the report with all of its lovely graphs and references, 
jump down into the description below, and I have links to everything that I reference in this video down in the bibliography section. That's right. I actually read more than the Wikipedia page for this one. Now it's time to hop into this mad science. For anyone out there concerned about the difference between a scientific paper and a consumer survey, the difference is, this is way less impossible to read. A couple thousand participants were sent a 10-15 to 15 minute Google form online because even scientists aren't about to give up this work from home world we now live in. The survey was split into two forms, A and B. Form A was about more general refreshment, while Form B was about specifically beer. The survey was performed in Texas, so you know they had to have a bunch of graphs just about beer. Form A consisted of eight questions, which asked participants the significance of refreshing as a perception, their definition of refreshment in the first place, and the different fruits, vegetables, and drinks that they found most refreshing. Am I saying refreshing enough for everyone? Anyone feeling a bit parched all of a sudden? Sure could go for a nice cold glass of Sprite right about now, huh? I'm sorry, I... don't know how this got here. Is the Underworld sponsored by Big Coke or something? You'd think they'd go for something more pomegranate-focused, right? Anyway, Form A. This form's findings showed that nearly all participants, 99.8%, cited that they have had the need to consume a food or beverage to feel refreshed, and 76.3% cited that they need this at least once per day. This seems to imply that refreshment isn't just something nice to have in the summer, it's a year-round need. Perhaps my episode at Disney was just the final straw after a lifetime of neglecting my refreshment needs? Let's see if the survey has some more answers. When the responses were totaled, the favorite source of refreshment in each category was watermelon for fruits, cucumbers for vegetables, and water for drinks. So we can already tell this survey is some bullshit, because I drank water at Disney World, and it did not stop my death by defreshment. The most popular way to describe the perception of refreshing was thirst quenching, and the most popular factors in determining if a food or beverage was refreshing was temperature and a cooling effect. That would explain why the lukewarm water just wasn't cutting it. The thirst might have been quenched, but the temperature just didn't have the appropriate cooling effect. I guess the people in the survey were only imagining cold water and not whatever it is they bottle in Florida that reaches room temperature in record times, so I'll allow it for now. After all, we're only two pages in. Form B was 10 questions long and covered most of the same topics as the first form, just specifically for beer. Most participants rated beer somewhere between a 7 to 10 on the scale of refreshment, which is interesting because in the list of refreshing beverages from the first survey, Beer was second to last, just above milk in popularity, and it's not exactly an accomplishment to beat out milk in this field. It's damn hot. Milk was a bad damn choice. Damn milk was hot. Hot damn milk. Also, not to keep getting sidetracked, but most of the people surveyed said that the most important factor in beer is its flavor. I would understand a few people. But for the most important aspect in beer to be its flavor is outlandish. Just admit you want to drink piss and we can all move on with our lives, okay? Since we're going to pretend that flavor is important, most participants preferred a crisp, clean flavor profile, specifically a lime flavor, which coincides with the high preference for light and citrusy summer beers. This might also explain why Sprite was doing it for everyone when water just couldn't cut it for me. Maybe a light, citrusy soda was just packing more refreshment factor than my plain water. The most popular driver of refreshing perception was light and mood, aka getting tipsy, and flavor and temperature were neck and neck for the most important factors in beer-related refreshment. At least you piss-loving freaks were willing to say something other than just taste for once. It's worth noting that the questions on these forms were multiple choice, not open-ended. So if one of your favorite fruits, veggies, or bevs weren't included, don't blame me. I just read the studies, I don't perform them. They won't let me back into the lab ever since I shattered that glass dish with a hot penny. So, what can we glean from all of this? Well, 
it seems like there's a pretty strong case to be made that cold and thirst quenching are pretty important factors of refreshment. The survey doesn't really sell me on the rest of its findings, though. For one thing, it assumes that all of these options are equally cold and available. But if I'm going to stick to my mission statement of saving you from defreshment on a hot Disney World sidewalk, I need to consider the fact that you might not have as many options. Also, who cares what these people think? There was some consensus here and there for sure, but this report doesn't tell me why any of these things are refreshing, just that they seem to be. Many suggestions are made, but there's nothing definitive to work with here. I can't just hope you agree with the people in this survey. I need something more concrete to save you from passing out on the concrete. If you're a nasty little piss freak who thinks that beer refreshes you, there's nothing in this report to support or reject that claim. I just have to live in a world where you get to slurp down that nasty wheat juice and claim you're refreshed? No, that's unacceptable. So, I guess I'm going to have to read a second paper on the sensory perception of refreshing. Let's get into the crazy world of gel-based models. I really wish I knew what I meant by that. This paper already has the much kinder title of Sensory Determinants of Refreshing, so I'm already a much bigger fan. In the words of the authors, the objective of this study is to better understand the respective roles of olfaction, taste, trigeminal, and texture perception on refreshing sensation in a gel model system. What the hell does trigeminal mean? Basically, they created a variety of sensory options by combining different levels of odors, flavors, and thickeners into a gel made of water and some basic sugars. They then gave a group of 160 participants the gels to taste and rate on an intensity scale to quantify the experience. To make sure that the flavor of the gels didn't start to blend together, participants were required to eat unsalted crackers and drink water during five minute breaks. We can assume from this that the unsalted cracker is the least refreshing item on earth. This should come as a surprise to no one based solely on my career online. After running the numbers through a few calculations to filter out whatever it is you're supposed to filter out in statistics, we're left with three main groups, each with their own idea of what made a gel refreshing. Group 1 preferred mint, aka cold flavors, group 2 was a big fan of acidity, and group 3 had a beef with the thicker gels. This gives us a few new groups for potentially refreshing traits, as well as serving as a great replacement for the Hogwarts houses. Ravenclaws, you're now a 1, and you just want potable mouthwash. If you want to cool off, drink something cooling, it just makes sense. Gryffindor, you're a 2, and you think liquid warheads are where it's at. How very brave and basic. Hufflepuff, you're a three because you don't really care what something tastes like just as long as it isn't viscous. You want to have a nice, non-divisive time. Slytherins are the most thirsty people out there and refuse to seek refreshment no matter how many times you beg them to drink some water, so they don't have a group. If you identify as a Slytherin, this isn't the first time you felt left out. I will not be taking questions or notes on this. The gels have spoken and only I was brave enough to listen. Now get out there and make your thousands of quizzes about which refreshment cluster you are and how the results will almost certainly surprise you. Go ahead and leave this video open while you do that, and I'll get back to the paper. While none of the groups could agree on what made their favorite gels refreshing, sweetness was pretty universally considered an unattractive trait when looking for refreshment. That's also in line with some of the findings from the first paper, so it seems pretty safe to say that sugar is not the path to refreshment. The only group with a positive opinion of sweetness was group 2, and that's probably more related to the fact that sugar helps take the edge off of the acidity. The most notable finding was that 69% of the participants considered their favorite gel to also be the one they found most refreshing. So your favorite drink is more than likely related in your brain to refreshment somehow. This is probably useful to know, but we're not to the useful part of the video yet, so just put a pin in it. We have more science to cover. If, like me, you're still curious why these three groups even exist, then you're in luck. There's still nothing definitive because science hates that shit, but the authors do have a few theories. They believe that each person's food habits influence which group you'll fall in. For instance, group one had a lot of people who take breath fresheners multiple times a day, so they would find mint more refreshing. So, there you have it. Two scientific papers worth of knowledge on refreshment. The dark science has been spread, and I can finally rest easy knowing I've given you the tools you need to avoid my tragic fate. Tools like drink something cold if it's 
hot out. Make sure it's thirst quenching. Uh, eat a cucumber. How do we get here again? Maybe we should take a step back and consider what we've learned so far. Let's see. We've defined refreshment as an emotional response to eating or drinking something cool or cooling to the touch and thirst quenching. Sweetness is not considered a refreshing trait, and unsalted crackers are the absolute antonym to refreshment. Also, I failed to mention this before, but both papers offer the possibility that high acidity or sourness feels more refreshing because it helps your mouth to produce more saliva. This makes it feel less dry, which in turn makes you feel more refreshed. I didn't mention it before because the reports kind of offer it at the end as a vague explanation for some of the findings, so it didn't feel very proven, but we're already reaching for straws here, so we might as well run with it. Some drinks use sugar to cover up the bite of high acidity, which is why some sugary drinks are still considered refreshing despite what we've found so far. The sugar and sour balance each other out. Basically, lemonade. Sour lemons and sweet sugar mixed together with water for a hydrating, saliva-inducing, energizing combo. And all of that is not exactly helpful. If I'm being honest here, I think we might have ended up with more questions than we started with. Other than the suggestion for why sour might be a refreshing concept and the fact that mint is cold, we haven't really ended up with a lot of answers to what makes something refreshing. Was I always destined to fall victim to defreshment? Was there truly no way to know what would have refreshed me? I'm sorry, I thought I had the answers, but everywhere I look I just find another question instead. Is this my true punishment? Not to humiliate myself online, but to forever search for the solution to a problem that cannot be solved. This must be the first time someone has had a question they couldn't answer. If only there was a field besides science that I could turn to for some sort of metaphysical guidance. Until I think of something, let's talk about the philosophy of refreshment. I told you once never to try to predict me, but this isn't even where I thought I was going with this one. At some point, this was just supposed to be a video about why lemonade and Sprite taste refreshing, but I started doing my research and I stumbled onto something far more interesting. You see, I've been reading a lot of philosophy lately, and it turns out that if you're asking the right questions, you can make a philosophy out of anything. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's asking too many questions, and the more I asked, the more I kept hitting a wall that science couldn't leap. The senses were a helpful place to start, but I couldn't find anything that could give me an exact answer on what we should consider refreshing. The closest we could get was a trinity of refreshing experiences, but even that was a dead end. And that's when I realized what my issue was. Scientific papers were never going to tell me what makes something refreshing, because refreshment isn't a scientific concept. It's a philosophical one. So I took a big step back and I reassessed all of my questions. And once I started looking at them through a philosophical lens, things started to click. Why are our favorite drinks the ones that refresh us the most? In what way is getting tipsy refreshing? Why can't we agree on what makes something refreshing, but we can all definitely agree on what isn't? All of these questions are leading us somewhere, but we have to leave the world of rational truths and enter a land of striving questions if we want to get our answers. I made a bit of a mistake at the beginning of this video when I assumed that refreshment and hydration had to be related. We've seen by now that just because something tastes refreshing doesn't necessarily mean it's good for hydrating. 
It might just be cool to the touch or energizing or any other number of things based on each person's preference. Refreshment makes a lot more sense when you think of it not as a quality of something, but as an emotional state we are attempting to achieve. Essentially, saying something tastes refreshing is more along the lines of saying, that tastes happy, and not, that tastes salty. That might sound strange at first, but eating ice cream when you're sad is a trope for a reason. Our senses can affect our emotions in plenty of other ways, why not add refreshment to that list? So if it is an emotion, and not just purely about hydration, why do we seek it out? What's the use of refreshment? The first thing I had to realize was that we use refreshed for way more context than just food or drink. We're going to have to expand our horizons a bit if we're going to understand the full scope of this emotion. Sure, a nice cold glass of lemonade on a hot day is refreshing, but so is waking up from a nice nap. At least, that's what I've been told I'm supposed to feel. For me, most naps are a black hole in my day where the will to do anything other than lay motionless on my couch goes to die. Refreshment can come from a hot shower, or you can refresh a web page if it's not loading correctly. The word has a variety of uses, but they all come down to some sense of renewal. Being refreshed is about entering a state of restoration. Your refreshed self is the most true essence of who you are, and becoming things like thirsty, tired, sweaty, and achy pull you away from this ideal form. If all of this is true, and it's me we're talking about so you can never be too sure, then refreshment is about some type of personal equilibrium. You can't be too hot or too cold, too energetic or too tired. You have to be at the top of your game. Refreshment is the emotion you feel when you're in harmony with your surroundings. This can explain why our favorite drink is associated with refreshment. Really, it's the other way around. Our favorite drink is whatever the right mix of chemicals is that returns our body to its ideal state. Refreshment is just about fulfilling whatever need we currently have, so our favorite option is whatever has the best chance at fulfilling our different needs. It also explains why people found the lightness you get from drinking beer refreshing. It's just relieving the tension from the day and returning you to a state of relaxation or a more ideal state. Heck, even the problem with sweetness makes sense through this lens. Like I said before, group 2 likely didn't mind the sweetness because it mixed well with the acidity to mellow each other out. This resembles how both flavors meet in nature, so it makes sense that our body wouldn't mind it in the attempt to go back to its natural state. It's only when the sugar gets to unnatural levels that it makes you feel less than yourself and therefore less refreshed. Just using our senses to understand refreshment is kind of doing it a disservice though. It is certainly a multisensorial experience, but it's also benefiting from all kinds of psychological elements. As much as our ideal self is grounded in nature, it's also learned. After all, Gatorade doesn't sell itself on flavor alone. It sells you on the idea that you're enjoying the same thing as your favorite athletes. Coke sells itself on the simple sound of refreshment. Ah. If you think that drinking something will help you achieve your ideal version of yourself, you're more likely to associate that with refreshment on a subconscious level. In the beer survey from the first paper, answers varied significantly based on age, which suggests that our perception of beer is based almost entirely on learned behaviors. The reason sourness makes people salivate is believed to partially be learned as well. Eating or drinking something highly acidic does make you salivate the first time, but after that, your body reacts naturally just to thinking about it. Your reaction becomes a programmed psychological trigger to the idea of sourness. This could radically change how we think about these things. I immediately jumped to lemonade as the ideal refreshing drink because I'm from a part of the world where that's been beaten into my head relentlessly. Maybe if I'd never heard of lemonade before, I would find it to be extremely defreshing. If refreshment is a philosophical state of being, then we have far more control over how we get refreshed than we might like to think. According to the survey, almost everyone agrees that refreshment is a need, but I just took it for granted that how we refresh ourselves is completely out of our control. With enough time and effort, you could change what you think is refreshing. If your favorite food and drinks are closely tied to what you find to be most refreshing, this could have a major impact on your day-to-day -day life. After all, the lack of refreshment that I felt at Disney World didn't really hit until I looked all around me. It was my perception of everyone else being more refreshed that made me think that water wasn't good enough. I mean, can you think of a worse decision for me than deciding that Sprite was a smarter option than water? 
that's when I realized what this video is really about. I still want to save you from my fate, but I know now that what I died from wasn't defreshment. It was the concept of refreshment itself. Don't know what I mean by that? Let's talk about myutic ends. Games Agency is Art by C.T. Nguyen is a book about a lot of things. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go into all of them today, but I will take the time to briefly suggest that you should probably read this book. It's incredibly valuable and insightful. It goes into the definition of what a game even is, which is probably something you didn't realize you don't have a good definition for, but after you read this book, it will be painfully obvious. It also does a good job of explaining why we even play games in the first place, which is something dear to my heart. The reason I'm bringing it up is because it introduced me to the concept of a meiotic end. Meiotic ends are a goal we set in the name of achieving a completely different goal. Why would we do this? Well, good question. It's typically because we don't actually know what we want the end goal to be. You see, sometimes we want something, but we can't get at it directly. In order to achieve our true desire, we have to take up a goal that we fully plan on dropping once it's guided us to the end that we actually desire. Falling in love is a good example that the book uses. When you truly love someone, it isn't for the sake of having someone to love, it's because you feel genuine love towards that person. If you were to find out that they're only with you because their goal in life is to love someone and you just happen to be around, you wouldn't think they felt the same way about you. The problem is, you aren't born already knowing who it is you're going to fall in love with. Instead, you take up the goal of falling in love so that when you meet someone you think is worth your time, you can switch your goal to loving them instead. The alternative would be that you keep up the goal of falling in love with someone after meeting someone to fall in love with, in which case you've kind of failed in your goal. Obviously, love is a lot more complicated than that, and there are all kinds of teleological aspects to it that we can't even get into right now, but the example does give a basic idea of what we're working with here. Maybe you're starting to see where we're going with this? Is refreshment an emotion you recall feeling after you've obtained it? In my experience, refreshment is something that happens briefly before vanishing entirely. It's kind of like trying to breathe with a stuffy nose. It's all you can think about while it's happening, but as soon as you breathe normally again, you hardly notice it. This would mean that refreshment is a meiotic end that we take up for the sake of achieving equilibrium. The true end goal is continued survival, but we take up refreshment periodically in the day-to-day -day in order to help maintain our bodily functions and self-conception. Both papers support this claim by showing that refreshment is something that you only feel when you have a need for something, and it's greater when your body has a greater need. Water has been found to be more refreshing when participants were thirsty rather than satiated. The refreshing property of a drink is modulated by the body state of the consumer, water deficient, feeling hot, dry mouth, and the desire to drink water for hydration purposes, but also to wet the mouth and to cool. But now you might be saying to yourself, thank you, Chester Starling, star of the Starlings, for this very interesting information about meiotic ends, but why should I care? Does this have any actual effect on how I'm going to live the rest of my life? The answer, of course, is <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so glad you're enjoying the video, and only if you want it to. What makes refreshment such an interesting meiotic end is that we undertake it so frequently we might start to forget that it's not always present. Something like falling in love may come and go, but it's unlikely that you'll deal with it one day just to have to satisfy it again the very next. With refreshment, that's exactly what's happening. Because it's a mostly subconscious phenomenon, we can sometimes find ourselves chasing it without realizing we can't have it. You can't just drink a cold glass of water and expect to be refreshed. If it's cold out or if you're already hydrated, your body has no reason to provide you with a refreshed feeling. This goes back to the problem I had at Disney. I wasn't suffering from a lack of refreshment, I was chasing refreshment where there was none to be found. What you don't know is that I had been downing water all day in an attempt to stay hydrated, and my only problem was that it worked. I was so ahead of the game that my body was never required to ask for some refreshment. Because everyone around me was in need of something refreshing, they were able to drink their name brand citrus soda to achieve a feeling of refreshment. 
by perceiving everyone else around me as more refreshed, I started chasing a goal that I didn't need. I was already at equilibrium, but I wanted the rush of good vibes that came with getting back to that state. I started self-sabotaging in an attempt to create a deficiency that would require refreshment, and it all caught up to me in that fateful line to Expedition Everest. I was more accurate than I realized when I told you that I would be your Jacob Marley on this journey. My suffering is a direct result of the bottomless greed that I couldn't see until it was too late. It's weird to see how we got here, but I do think this is the only way to save you from what happened to me. Refreshment is not a need. It's an indicator of something that you need. Don't mix the two up. If you're feeling refreshed, then you're doing something right, but if you want to feel refreshed, Make sure it's for a good reason. Otherwise, you might end up like me, stuck here in this YouTube void, caught in an endless spiral. At the end of the day, trust your body. When it asks for refreshment, treasure the bliss of answering that call. But don't go seeking it out for its own sake. The point of a meiotic end is to drop it. Don't get so caught up in the chase that you forget what it's all for. Oh, by the way, I have a website. It's not much right now, but it will be where I keep all of my less YouTube-friendly pursuits. If you like the things I say but would prefer to read them, this is the perfect place for you. There will be a link in the description, and there's a newsletter you can sign up for to stay in the loop on updates. I'm still working on some things, so there's plenty more coming that way soon. Alright, bye for real this time.